So today is a big day for me. I have been planning this shot for months. So the shot I've been researching and practicing is called the uh, quickly down under bucket shot. Yeah, if you haven't seen the movie, basically it's a, it's a great movie from the 1990s. It's just a classic Western movie set in Australia. There's a backstory to the reason why I'm so obsessed with this shot. And it goes back to last year when I met up with my friends over at Air Gun Depot, Travis and then Cameron from Air Force uh, Air Guns came over. And we were demoing the new uh, Air Force Texan 45 with the carbon fiber bottle. It was their idea to make the Quigley Down Under bucket shot. So cool, awesome, you know, obviously a lot of Hollywood uh, magic and different special effects we'd use to make that uh, shot. Fine, you're hired. During that process, we were doing some research online of like what was the actual distance to that shot. And I was surprised that these online forums, these shooting forums, there was an NRA article written about this. There's uh, shooting competitions, but they're all based on these different estimations and guesses what the actual shot distance was. So me being the obsessive air gunner and long range shooter that I am, I was like, I've, I've got to figure this out. There's got to be a way to calculate the actual distance of that shot. And really the only way to know is to find the actual filming location of where that shot was taken. But come to find out the entire movie was filmed in Australia. So I'm obsessive, but I'm not going to get on an airplane and fly to Australia to figure out the distance of a shot. But it was just nagging at me. Why couldn't we figure out what the actual distance of that shot was? The purpose of this video, one, to kind of show you what the actual distance was, and two, to introduce a lot of you that uh, aren't familiar with big bore air guns. It's a huge growing sport. I'm really active in it. And I'm gonna be using uh, one of my favorite big bore air guns today, the Air Force Texan 50 cal. So if this is your first uh, introduction to this new sport, man, let me tell you, it's great for hunting, it's great for shooting. Yeah, I wanna share with you about how I came to the conclusion of what the actual distance is for this shot. Buckle up, this is gonna get pretty nerdy, it's gonna get pretty deep, so here we go. As we started doing research on this shot, we found that there's basically two kind of main theories out there about what the actual distance of this shot was. One is that it was 782 yards. If you've ever shot anything in that 700 and beyond uh, distance, you know in the film, in that scene, that was not a 782 yard shot. It was much closer than that. But it was very interesting. That theory was established by uh, somebody on YouTube that basically took a stopwatch and said, if the average speed of that horse is X miles per hour and it ran for a certain amount of time, they calculated what that distance was, which came up to 782 yards. So that was kind of a cool way using some math pretty flawed math actually. If there were so many cuts in that scene of them going from the guy and the horse back to Quigley, there's just no way to tell actually how far that uh, horse was running during that amount of time. So basically that 782 yard shot, that's completely wrong. So the next theory is that the shot was uh, 500 yards and that actually comes from a little bit more of a trusted source. It's, uh, I found it on the NRA shooting sports website. And that was based on a article that was written by Roger Clouser. So that's from a well-known uh, magazine writer from years ago who said it was roughly 500 yards. What's funny about that is uh, there's been a lot of um, like air gun shooting competitions, the Quigley Bucket Challenge that have been based off that 500 yard number. But come to find out that number is even completely wrong. So back to the drawing board. Um, again, I came to this realization. I've got to find out the actual location of where that bucket shot was taken and be able to measure that distance. But the problem is with all the shooting locations uh, being in Australia, so it was gonna be like finding a needle in the haystack. So the first thing I did is I actually got online and I looked at the uh, internet movie database website where it lists every movie that probably has ever been made, uh, filming locations, cast, all a bunch of obscure details and facts about these movies. So what was cool I found on that website was it lists all the places in Australia where the filming locations were for Quigley Down Under. So what I decided to do was join Facebook community groups for each one of those little towns that you see <laughs> in the uh, internet movie database for Quigley Down Under. And I started posting questions of like, hey, does anybody know uh, anything about this movie when it was filmed in your town back in the early 90s? 
Does anybody have any inf information uh, about this film that you could help me locate the actual location of um, the shot? So in one of the community groups, I absolutely hit the jackpot. So the community group was in Alice Springs, which was actually one of the main shooting locations of Quigley Down Under, where you actually see the ranch. And come to find out, that's where the uh, bucket shot was actually filmed, was just outside of Alice Springs. And I'll tell you what, talk about the jackpot. I literally found the person that owns the land <laughs> where that scene was shot. Not only did I find the rancher that owns that land, but he was actually in the movie. <laughs> so I basically reached out to Richie and I started asking him a bunch of questions. It was totally awesome. He answered all my questions and really specifically, I was like, hey, can you show me exactly on your land where that scene and where that ranch was built? Because I knew if he could show me exactly where it was on his property, I could open up Google Earth and use all of the GPS uh, location tools and all of the elevation measuring tools that the Google Earth uh, software provides. So yeah, he gave me the location roundabouts where it was and I opened up Google Earth and I started poking around and sure enough, so I actually found the remnants of the set of where the ranch was set up. Then from there, I was able to identify trees that were in those scenes and sure enough, I found an old wagon trail that was used during that movie that went right through that area where you can tell there were buildings and uh, potentially a fenced off gated area for cattle. So one of the things about that scene that you'll notice is that as the horse rides out, he goes up on this ridge, which looks to be about a 15 to 20 foot uh, elevation change. And sure enough, using Google Earth's uh, elevation measuring tool, I was able to find that exact ridge. So being able to line up where Quigley was standing uh, in comparison to those trees that you see in the background, following that wagon trail up to that ridge, I was pretty darn sure I was spot on close, but I needed one more piece of evidence to let me know that this in fact was the exact and i'm saying the exact location of that bucket and so one of the things that i stumbled upon in google earth which is pretty darn cool is that when you take your satellite imagery and you place into ground view you can actually see in 3d the surrounding horizon and sure enough when i drop that pin behind where the shot was taken check this out so that horizon ridge line that you see out in the distance is exactly what you see in the movie, which tells me this is the exact location and exact distance of that bucket. So with that said, all of these theories and guesses that are out there that it was a thousand yards, 750, 782, 500 yards. So I can now tell you with some pretty darn certainty that that shot was 325 yards. So a huge shout out to Richie Hayes for helping me with this project. Super awesome guy to chat with. It was pretty awesome. He agreed to do an interview with me. So yeah, so check out this Skype interview that I did with uh, Richie to talk a little bit about the movie, kind of give me some insight about the history of that shot. So yeah, check it out. All right, so today we have with us uh, Richie Hayes from Alice Springs, Australia. And uh, Richie's the actual landowner of where the movie set for Quigley Down Under was filmed. And before we get into the interview, I just wanted to, Richie, I really wanted to thank you so much. I mean, I really kind of picked your brain and asked you a ton of questions about that filming location. So I just really wanted to formally thank you and uh, helping me solve this mystery. Anytime, my boy. Anytime. <laughs> awesome. Thanks. So, yeah, just out of curiosity, how did the um, the filmmakers of Quigley Down Under approach you, and how did they choose this filming location? They had, they had the, the cattle property of the ranch, uh, where they just not too far out of Alice Springs, and um, the that movie crew approached us, and we, we gave them a site to put the for their movie, and the, um, we had a, it was our cattle that were on the, on the set as well on the day of starting, and was pretty amazing for um, for the area. So yeah, that's pretty awesome for them to have selected your land to uh, to do the filming location. So my next question is this. So yeah, you were telling me in the messages back and forth a little bit about your experience during the filmmaking and the fact that you were there with Tom Selleck and so you actually saw him, you know, practicing a little bit and you you actually saw how they uh, pulled off the uh, the Hollywood magic of the uh, the bucket shot. So. Yeah, tell us a little bit more about that experience. Selleck was there, and, and the the actual photo where he hits the bucket, well, that's uh, that's a bit of a, uh, <laughs> a 
not quite try, not quite. There's a bit of movie license in that, but I did see him shooting some rounds into the uh, hill before he, he took the shot, just to get the motion, the motion right. So when he to feel like you know what a, what sort of a kick the gun would give him, we went over to a spot and he was just putting a few rounds into a hill, just getting the just to give see what the recoil was, so he could reenact that. So that's so that's pretty awesome. So you were also telling me that uh, you actually had a part in the movie. So, yeah, uh, I actually found that spot in the movie uh, where you uh, played the role of a soldier. So, yeah, tell us tell us a little bit about your scene. Yeah, I was a soldier in, in a few of the scenes. I was leading. Yeah, I was leading that that horse with the the deceased over the over the pummel of the of the battle. Um, so you were also telling me that you actually had the opportunity uh, in the evening times to go out with the cast and, and the crew a few times, and so so maybe you can tell us some um, some stories there about uh, about some of those shenanigans. Uh, yeah, several times uh, <laughs> at the uh, we, there's a um, resort type thing just not um, not far from the movie set, and we got on the. Uh, yeah, drinks one night, and holy smokes, that was a huge night. But I, um, Tom Selleck's uh, double, he he became very, very good friends with my grandmother, uh, were drinking partners. He used to come after work every night. He'd go past the, the ranch homestead and um, proceed to drink a bottle of whiskey with my grandmother every night. <laughs> they were very good friends, even to the day she died, they... They kept in contact. So that's pretty awesome. Okay, so moving on to the actual site location of the uh, where the, the film set was located. Um, so when you told me where it was on your land and I was able to zoom in on it on Google Earth, I was only able to find what looked to be like like the frames or like the foundations of where buildings were. It was You can only see like the outlines of the, the rectangular and square areas of where you could see, like, where the ranch uh, was. So maybe kind of tell us a little bit about how they set up the uh, the shooting location and how they built out those structures. That was all temporary set, yeah. They put that there um, for that. That that was built in the next amount of, well, it took a month to build or whatever the time frame was. And the, it's incredible how the, the special effects guys went around and made it authentic looking. It was incredible. So let's talk a little bit about the actual physical, uh, the bucket location when they when they set up that shot and they set up all the special effects and everything for it. So maybe describe to me, um, you know, how that was on scene and how uh, you saw them setting all that up. The uh, bucket shot, the the main main shot where he shoots the bucket, right right out in front of the set, uh, right in front of the he he stood. Right next to the gate at the um, the ranch homestead, and uh, the distance to that it was quite a way to the bucket on the hill, and that that was pretty. Um, that the timing they had took a several several. It wasn't the first. Um, they just, like to make it all look authentic. The, the timing of how they did it was very very tricky. So mm-hmm. it, the, to make the smoke off the gun. And the bucket bounce at the same time was a was um, a lot of mucking about. I know they did it more than once. That little shot underneath it—I don't know a detonator of some description to make it do the flip. But the and the is shooting out the rounds, with, which were blanks, I presume. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that is pretty awesome. So, Richie, uh, to wrap up our interview, um, I actually wanted to tell you, uh, so based on all the information you were able to give me about your land and the the shooting location, I was able to use uh, the Google Earth uh, GPS uh, satellite imagery and uh, mapping tools. And whenever I measured out that shot, it came out to uh, 325 yards. So uh, pretty awesome. So thanks for all your help, sir, helping me figure that out. (laughs) That's, That's cool. (laughs) <laughs> That's really cool. Awesome, Richie. Uh, thanks again for everything, and uh, you take care now. Okay, mate. You'd be good. See you, mate. Yep. But yeah, before we make this attempt on camera, let's go ahead and compare uh, Quigley's equipment as compared to my air gun equipment today. All right, so here it is. Let's check it out. 
Legendary shaft. You know your weapons. It's a lever action breech loader. Usual barrel length 30 inches. This one has an extra four. So just like Quigley's Sharps rifle, the Air Force Texan has a 34 inch barrel, which is inside that shroud that you see here. So at the end of that shroud, you have a baffling cup, which is a suppression device that brings the report down of this 50 caliber uh, air gun. And without it, it is, it is pretty loud. It actually sounds like a 20 gauge shotgun going off unsuppressed. From the factory in this LSS format, that baffling cup does a really good job of bringing down the sound suppression. And so to take that sound suppression to the next level, to take it from moose fart quiet down to mouse fart quiet, so I've added the Donnie FL Ronin suppressor and the Air Force Texan 50 caliber adapter. And man, that thing is quiet. And you'll hear it in my shooting sequence here coming up, but it, it definitely makes this 50 caliber air belching beast super quiet. It's converted to use a special 45 caliber 110 grain metal cartridge with a 540 grain paper patch bullet. So yeah, I chose to go with some ammunition that uh, I, so I probably wouldn't use this heavy of a slug for deer hunting. I'm probably gonna move down into the 380 grain range hollow points. But uh, for the sake of this shot, I actually wanted to find a slug that matched up uh, at least ballistically or the same grain weight uh, as close as I could to what Quigley was using in the movie. So I went with the uh, Mr. Hollow Point 545 grain Spitzer slugs. And I'll tell you what, at 775 feet per second, these things are ridiculously accurate. It's pretty loopy at uh, such a low velocity and they track like a guided missile. So this was the ammunition that I decided to go with. Actually made this uh, extra special was when I approached uh, Mr. Hollow Point about uh, sponsorship to get me some slugs for the 50 caliber Texan. He himself is a huge Quigley Down Under uh, fan, and of course he was willing to step up and give me some lead to attempt this shot. So a huge shout out to Mr. Hollow Point. Makes great ammunition for the 50 caliber and really all the different calibers for the Air Force Texan. So thanks a lot to uh, Mr. Hollow Point for making this possible. It's fitted with double set triggers and a vernier sight. It's marked up to 1,200 yards. This one shoots a mite further. So you notice in the movie, the Sharps rifle that Quigley is shooting with has a set of uh, vernier sights, uh, which is basically like a peep sight that can move up and down there in the rear for extreme long range shooting. So the Air Force Texan is really made to uh, be mounted with a scope. So I wanted to attempt this shot doing it as close as I could to the exact Quigley shot. So I had to kind of fashion together. So I would call this a uh, modern day version of what Quigley was using. So what you see here is the Air Force air guns diopter sights. So these sights are actually used for like 10 meter and 30 meter uh, close range pellet shooting competition. So what you're doing is you're just looking through that rear peep sight and uh, lining up the, the shadow of that peep sight with that circle and then putting your target right in the middle of that circle. So with that front aperture, being so close on this scope rail, ideally that would be out there about 34 inches at the end of the barrel. But since there's nowhere to mount it, I had to fabricate some type of long rail system in order for it to work. You'll notice that trying to line up that target at 325 yards is like, it's literally like putting a grain of sand and trying to get it exactly into the middle of that circle. And so that is how difficult this shot is. So this whole crazy uh, concoction that I've got put together here is mounted on a Heritage Arms cold shot Moab base. And what this is, is an adjustable Picatinny rail base that I can actually elevate all the way up to 350 minutes of angle for extreme long range shooting. And if you follow my channel and some of the other long range stuff that I've done, like the Guinness uh, world record shot that I did with the 177 pellet, this is the exact rail that I'm using to be able to dial in that calculated trajectory to the target. And so without this thing, there's really no way I could have been able to calculate the holdover on this shot. Quite honestly, there's just no possible way for me to see any kind of uh, dust feedback or being able to see any kind of mirage to, to calculate windage. So this new device from Tacticam is called the Spotter LR, and this thing is absolutely sweet. It's a video camera system with a display screen that pops right onto any spotting scope that you have. So this one, I've got it paired with the Hawk Frontier ED 
60 magnification spotting scope. And with this thing, it's basically like having like a virtual uh, wind calling partner sitting right next to you. So that way you can see Mirage, you can look down at it and, and, and look for uh, dust feedback. So that way if you have to walk the shot up or if you're shooting long. So you'll see me in the shot sequence after I pull the trigger, you'll see me quickly look down uh, into the spotting scope just to kind of see where, where I'm hitting. So yeah, huge shout out to Tacticam for getting me one of the very first units. Uh, definitely check these things out. If you always don't have that spotting partner to be able to come alongside, this is the perfect long range piece of technology that I'm adding to my kit. An experimental weapon with experimental ammunition. You could call it that. So as soon as I figured that out, it was 325 yards. I knew like, hey, that is actually an attainable shot shooting offhand with a big bore air gun. And I wanted to be the first to try it. So you got to remember in that movie, uh, quickly shooting a sharps rifle, which is shooting roughly between 1400 to 1500 feet per second. So with me shooting my Air Force Texan uh, 50 cal at about 775 feet per second, ballistically speaking, for me to make that 325 yard shot, it's going to feel like it's actually twice as long as the actual Quigley shot, just because of the amount of trajectory drop uh, there's gonna be as compared to Quigley shooting the uh, Sharps rifle. So that is what has brought us today in this shot attempt. And I'm super lucky to have a really awesome uh, neighbor who allowed me to come out to the radio tower field and do all my long range shooting that I wanna do this year. I have about 425 yards to play with and we're gonna use 325 yards of that just like in the movie. I am no Matthew Quigley so I had to go out there and dope this shot. Uh, started off with a, a benchmark MOA calculation that I, I came up with in my ballistics calculator and, and walked it up. And so basically I just walked it up until I was uh, putting lead on steel. lead on steel a little bit low that's uh, 75 MOA probably gonna bring it up probably another eight inches so yeah make some uh, MOA adjustments there bring it up let's try it offhand all right there's the bucket and there's my shooting position way out there on top of that hill let's go ahead and hang the bucket on the uh, two by four just to get it up out of the grass. All right, there we go. 325 yards. Let's try this offhand. So today we're actually going to attempt that shot with absolutely zero Hollywood trickery. So obviously Tom Selleck used a lot of Hollywood magic in that movie, but I think there's one more change we need to do to my setup, so here we go. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go full Quigley down under, hat, handkerchief, shirt, suspenders. This is the way to do it. So, all right, here we go. Let's check it out. All right, got the hat, got the handkerchief. Let's top this off, it's 3,600 PSI. All right, quickly did it in one shot. Let's see how many shots it'll take me. Here we go. No way! Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I hit the bucket or if I hit the... Uh... I might have hit the two by four. Ah, <laughs> it didn't come off. All right, let's let's try that again. <laughs> I hit I hit something. <laughs> I don't think I I don't know. I didn't hear metal, but let's see. Let's top this off again. Thirty six hundred psi.
Nope. All right, topped off 3,600 PSI. Let's see to get some bucket. I think I might've gotten a little wood on that first one. We'll go down there in a minute and see, but let's uh, see what we can do. about baby 325 yards quigley bucket challenge yeah <laughs> yeah oh <laughs> i can't believe it man months months of planning baby <laughs> all right let's go check it out let's go <laughs> All right, just so you guys know, I'm not doing any trickery with the camera here. I'm actually going to take, take the uh, camera off the tripod. Let's take a walk. Oh no. <laughs> ah! Oh no. Oh! Oh, hold on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's a hit. <laughs> All right, so check it out. After reviewing the video footage from the Tacticam Spotter LR scope, I realized that I actually hit that bucket on that very first shot. So what makes it even more awesome than hitting the bucket on the very first shot, check out this group. Being able to hold a bucket size group at 325 yards shooting offhand with an Air Force Texan 50 caliber big bore air gun is absolutely awesome. So it is actually possible that Matthew Quigley actually hit that bucket three times in a row. Other than hitting that on the very first shot, I couldn't ask for anything more. That's a pretty darn good group. Such an awesome way to end this project. So there it is, everybody. The very first ever non-Hollywood, accurate distance, Quigley bucket challenge shot. I will call that good. So thanks, everybody, for joining me. This is Chris with Up North Air Gunner. Take care.